Hey guys, I'm Liam Smith with Agent Smith Voice Productions. In the summer of 1940, a crucial event took place on the 24th of August during the Battle of Britain. The Fuhrer of Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, had forbidden any attacks against the British capital of London. But in a case of mistaken identity, bombs struck the city. The German bombers were instead supposed to hit military targets. In retaliation, the British Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, orders the first bombing raid against Berlin. The Wellington bombers caused only minor damage to the capital, but it was enough to instigate Hitler's fury. He ordered the head of the Luftwaffe, Reichsmarschall Hermann Göring, to launch mass-scale air raids upon British cities. From September 7, 1940 to the 11th of May, 1941, London was systematically bombed for 57 consecutive days and nights. This event would be known as the Blitz. Saturday the 7th of September was a scorching summer's day. At around 5 p.m., the first of 400 Heinkel HE-111 and Dornier Doe 17 bombers began attacking London, escorted by roughly 600 BF-109 fighters. At 8 p.m., another wave of bombers arrived and relentlessly continued the assault upon the Royal Docks. This came to be known as Black Saturday. The damage dealt was devastating and caused huge firestorms which erupted out of the carnage. In the aftermath of the daylight dock raids, Prime Minister Winston Churchill visited the stricken areas. In this section of archive footage, he is inspecting damage to flour mills at the Royal Victorian docks and the destruction on the community of Silvertown. After encountering resistance from the RAF during the day, in the following air raids, the Luftwaffe switched tactics and resorted to bombing cities and infrastructure by night, which made it increasingly difficult for fighter command to apprehend them. Many cities were targeted, such as Southampton, Bristol, and Liverpool. The night raids became increasingly more intense. Children were evacuated to the countryside and placed with local families to provide them a temporary home. During these night raids, the city lights were extinguished in order to prevent the bombers from identifying targets from the air. These were known as blackouts. To locate their targets, the Luftwaffe utilized technology known as beam navigation. The crews had to detect converging radio signals from two or more ground stations. In order to counter this, the British transmitted false navigation signals that were designed to send incoming crews off course. They also created a number of dummy targets, such as divisionary airfields and industrial targets that used lighting effects to simulate factories and transport. One such devastating Luftwaffe night raid on December the 29th and 30th, 1940, saw over 100,000 bombs fall upon London and turning it into a horrific firestorm. Incendiary bombs were the main armament. These horrifying weapons carried magnesium that, when detonated, started massive fires. Throughout the night, huge fires were started which the fire brigade couldn't extinguish. One such fireman described it as horrible, with the heat becoming unbearable, and then a wind started up. If you sucked this down, it would burn your lungs. Luckily, however, a full-scale firestorm never fully developed in London. So what would you do during an air raid? Firstly, the sirens would sound, warning you of approaching bomb formations. You were to stop what you were doing and run immediately for the nearest shelter. Air raid wardens would assist you to these shelters and risking their lives by trying to extinguish small fires and rescuing people trapped under the rubble or in a burning building. The larger fires would be dealt by the local fire brigade. Deep communal shelters provided the most protection against a direct hit. In this photograph, the Aldrich tube station is being used as a shelter. In the aftermath of the Blitz, more than 42,000 people perished, with 45,000 injured and over a million left homeless. 
but the idea you can bomb civilians into submission only increased the will to resist rather than eroding it. The people of Britain stood firmly behind Churchill, and their morale was not broken. What is ironic is that while Germany was the first to practice large-scale terror bombing against defenseless civilian targets, it eventually backfired upon them as the Allies were just as brutal, if not more proficient, in their attacks. Look no further than the horrific firebombings of Dresden and Tokyo in the later stages of the war. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. I really enjoy making these videos. And don't forget to give this a like and to subscribe for more content. You can also help support my channel by subscribing to my Patreon or donating to my PayPal. The links are in the description box down below. Finally, to my loyal subscribers, your contribution and ongoing support for this channel has been so helpful it really means the world to me. Liam Smith with Agent Smith Voice Productions. Until then, stay tuned. I'll see you next time.